Hey guys, this is one of my safes here and it is within arm's reach of my bed and it is bolted down to this heavy, heavy stand and then the stand is also secured. So it would take a lot of effort if somebody wanted to actually take this safe and I have it in this specific location because it keeps my home defense pistol in it. And so every night before I go to bed, I come in here and put in my passcode and for sure make sure that it's unlocked, but I typically will just go ahead and pull the, the pistol out and set it up on another stand. I'd say that the batteries typically last in this maybe just over a year and you really don't know exactly when they're gonna fail. Um, it does have a key access right here, um, but there's been many, I, I think I've had this one for maybe eight years or so and you know there's been at least seven or eight times probably that the i go to punch in the code and i'll get a warning up on the display basically saying that the batteries have failed um, so the last thing you'd want is in the middle of the night trying to get up trying to find your code in the dark um, and then have it not work so i make sure every night that it's unlocked so i make sure it's unlocked like that and i make sure i turn it like that that way i can just quickly and easy open that up and get to my stuff that's in there and I don't have any small kids in the house or anything, but still every morning uh, when I get up, I come back and then I make sure that that's locked so that it cannot come open now. So I had an ad pop up on Instagram from this company right here, Stopbox. And they have this, they're calling it a handgun retention device. Um, it's not necessarily a safe, um, but there's no external keys, there's no electronics, doesn't take any batteries. Um, so anyways, I reached out to them and asked if I could possibly take a look at their product. So I figured we'd do an unboxing here. Made in America. And it kind of shows some of the uses. But yeah, I figured we'd do an unboxing, kind of go over all the specifications and features of it, and then uh, give some thoughts on it. All right. So here's a manual. Um, basically, it'll be a thing telling you kind of how to operate it a little bit more. And this is the device itself. Uh, let's see if there's an end right here. It's got some tape on it. So this is it. Before we get into all the features, I'll go over some of the specs with you guys. Uh, exterior dimensions, uh, we're at just over 11 inches, maybe 11 and a quarter. Um, and then the width of it, uh, maybe seven and a half. The height is just about two. I don't think there's any additional paperwork or anything inside of it, but we'll get a weight. And if I find something when I open it, I'll reweigh it. So we got 27.3 ounces. So obviously less than two pounds. So the thing is super lightweight. Um, I did notice when I was trying to move it around there, it does have like these rubber feet on the bottom that are super, super grippy. You hear that? Like once it was down here, like it literally will not move. Like it's completely stuck onto that table. That's pretty incredible, but it lifts right off easily. But yeah, I'm like, the whole table's moving, but that thing won't move on there at all. So that's pretty unique. As I mentioned earlier off the box, it's made in the USA. It's made out of a uh, polycarbonate ABS. Um, supposed to be fairly impact resistant, obviously very lightweight, um, makes it real portable, but, but it seems real durable so far. So that user's manual is very easy to follow um, with illustrations. Shows you how to originally open it. And then if you want to change your passcodes or anything like that, that's on there. Goes over the warranty information, which they have a 30 day uh, risk-free trial. Um, and they also have a lifetime warranty on the product itself. So the stop box is definitely designed to use your right hand to open it. And basically you're gonna lay 
your hand kind of on this corner here and you're going to use your index finger and your pinky finger to push in the buttons on the top and then you're going to press down and uh, push your thumb in on the side button and i'll show you what these look like so these are the buttons here and then this is the thumb button so basically you just kind of index your hand or place your hand like this here so now my my four fingers are over top of those four buttons that's up there my thumb is there I'm gonna try holding this up so you guys can see how this works here. But so basically I'm gonna push in on these two right here at the same time, push down, and then this thing just pops open. And this is the inside. Let's get some inside dimensions while it's open here. So your gun cannot go beyond this area right here because of the locks and stuff like that. So this is gonna be the dimensions that we're going to look at. So we got uh, maybe eight and a half, eight and three quarters. And then right about six inches that way. And then the height was like half is just over an inch. But you can obviously put a gun that's thicker than an inch because it'll compress with the foam. So, I mean, you can go up to probably an inch and a half, inch and three quarters. Um, Kind of want to show you what the internals of this looks like. So you can see that those are the two buttons that I had to depress and had to depress that. And this is the lock mechanism here. And there's definitely a whole lot more weight on this side, like the lid side, than what there is the bottom side. And then I'll show you here as we close this. You'll be able to see how these things will pop back up then. And now it's locked again. So yeah, if you decide that you don't want it to be the index finger and the pinky finger, you can change that out to something different. Uh, I think that there are six different combinations that you can use uh, right from the factory here. And then they also sell some type of actuator accessory pack that allows you up to 16 different combinations. They claim that with practice that you should be able to get into this in well under a second. So it's just press those in and you're open. So this is a Beretta PX4 Storm. It's about a Glock 19 size, you know, four inch barrel. Um, I suppose you could probably go something at least four and a half, maybe a four and three quarter inch barrel, but anything that sticks out beyond this right here is not going to fit in there. This is the first time trying to close this with this gun in here with any gun. Um, and it is kind of, kind of tight. Like I'm going to have to kind of push down on this to get this thing to close. And that in there did not close. So let's try closing it again and I'll try to put like equal pressure on both sides as it's closing here. Now that side there still does not want to close. This side over here, I can get this side to push down, but that side will not. So let's try a different gun. That's kind of disappointing. So I move this over to where it's basically as far to this edge as it can go. So that leaves a little more space here. Um, we'll see if it'll close now. It's kind of a bit disappointing that you can't use up that whole space. Yep, there, it, it latched that time. So now in theory, having a gun in there should actually make this open easier and faster because it's gonna pop the lid even quicker. So yeah, that's really easy to get into now. All right, let's try a different pistol in it. Um, it's basically the same length, but a little bit thinner. So we'll see what this one does here. And I'm gonna purposely put it 
back here more just to see if this thing will close or not. All right. Yeah, that snapped, no problem at all. So let's try putting the Beretta in the other direction here. Um, I had it flipped this way because that's the way all their pictures and stuff on the website and then on the box and stuff show, but let's see if it'll fit in here this way. I know people have said that you can put a Glock 17 um, going in this direction here using the foam coming out this way, so let's see. Yes, it did in fact close pretty easily going that direction. So I guess maybe some thicker, like double stack guns, you might have to place them in this direction. And the other thing that I think will probably happen is just within so many days of having a pistol stored in here, that foam on the inside will kind of compress a little bit or break down just a little bit. And then it'll be a whole lot easier to put, you know, something this size uh, anywhere in that, that space that it's supposed to be. Let's also check to see if we can fit two somewhat smaller pistols in here. So I'll put a P365 there, and then an LCP2 there. This thing should close. Yep, no problem at all with that. So Stopbox says that this is travel friendly but it doesn't specifically say if it's TSA compliant or not, but I've read other reviews and users that have said that they've taken this on an airplane, you know, in their check luggage, and it's been fine. So I'm gonna basically show you here, like your, your gun has to be unloaded, no magazine, nothing in the chamber. Um, so we're gonna put that there. Your magazine has to also be empty anytime that you're flying. And then I'm gonna see if it'll close your ammo is supposed to be in the original box that it came in. Um, I've seen other people say though that uh, that they just have it in baggies and stuff, and it's it's fine. It's went through. It all depends on the agent, you know, at the gate or whatever, um, or ticket counter. But I'm gonna see if this thing will close with this box in it. I got a feeling that it's not going to, but so I might have to move that around some. But we'll see. Yeah, that side right there did not latch. So let me retry it. So I move stuff around just a little bit. But yeah, TSA says it has to be a hard case that is lockable. It doesn't say that you have to have padlocks and stuff like that. If you use a padlock, you have to keep the key with you at all times. Um, but it just says it has to be a hard case that's lockable. And it did latch there, yep. So you can see all the buttons are back out. So I could technically use this and then this would go into my check luggage. And just so you know, if you were to be traveling with this in your suitcase and you feel like it's gonna get you know jostled around a lot, once this foam kind of pushes down against each side, there's basically no chance of this thing moving. There's absolutely no movement of your firearm inside there at all. So I just wanted to let everybody know that. So as I mentioned earlier, the stop box is not a safe and is not meant to replace your safe. In my opinion, this is really practical for somebody who has small children in the house and you kind of want that transition between having your gun in the safe versus your gun just laying out on your nightstand. So you could pull it out of your safe at night, put it in here, close it, lock it down, I know that when my son was young, like four or five, six years old, that he would kind of wander into you know, our room in the middle of the night saying that a stomach hurt or, or something to that nature. And having something that's locked up beside of your bed um, is a way of preventing any type of accidents occurring to a family member or something like that in the middle of the night while you're sleeping. You know, I like that it's really lightweight. I like that it's very portable. Um, obviously no batteries, it's all mechanical. Um, you don't have to worry about any type of keys. So one of the first cons that I see with the stop box is the pricing. I've been talking with them for about a month now um, and the price has been right around $130. 
way, way, way overpriced for something like this. But I will say the entire time that I've been talking with them is they've been running this buy one, get one free special. So you basically add it to the cart and then there's a free one that you can add right there. So you basically get two of them for $130. So you're at $65 each. The second con kind of has to do with pricing, but right here is where you can slide one of those little cables through this. And then you could put it like around like the base of your car seat. Uh, you could wrap it around a, a desk or something like that. So somebody just can't easily walk off with this thing. And they do not include that cable with this. This was basically the only thing that was in that box. And that cable is like an extra $14 or something like that. I feel like that cable should be included, um, especially at that price point. And here is a third con. And again, this is just in my opinion, but I feel like it's kind of a big one. So they designed this to where basically it takes almost like an adult size hand to be able to put your fingers up here and thumb over here. But kind of a little bit of a flaw that I have seen now is I can turn this thing around and obviously it's locked. I have a gun in here right now. And from this position, I can take one hand and I can push in where my pinky would be. I can take another hand, push in where my index finger should be. And then just, it's a real short finger right there and push in on that and that'll pop right open now. So I think that is a little bit of a flaw on that design because it, it could mean that a child could get into that because it does not take very big hands from this way right here just to kind of push in, push in, push in and pop that right open. But they would obviously have to know, you know, what code you have set up here. And I'm not saying this is another con, but because uh, you know the size of it when you're buying it, but I would like to see possibly a little bit bigger uh, dimensions on it. Uh, maybe offer two different sizes. If I had like a, an optic or a red dot on the top of this, there's no way this would fit in here right now. Uh, so you're going to be really limited on the size of gun, especially if you, if you run an optic on it. But overall, you know, I think it's a pretty unique product. And for the most part, does a good job at securing your firearms or whatever else you'd want to put inside of it. But I think if you knew somebody else who was interested in one of these and you guys split the cost, so you're at $65, and if they included that cable, I think it's worth that then. Um, I have a biometric safe, and I think that opening this is just as fast because by the time it takes, you know, a second for the safe to like uh, read your finger, and then for the hinges to pop open and stuff like that, I could already be in this one. And I'm telling you, like, if, if you have an electronic keypad or electronic safe, biometric, your batteries or the electronics are going to fail in that. And you definitely don't want that to happen in the middle of the night when you would need it to work properly. So down in the video description, I will leave a link to Stopbox. If you want to find out more information about the original stop box or they have a couple newer things out so you can check everything out there. But that's going to be it on this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.